Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Well, it is officially summertime across the United States. Uh, I know it is hot as balls here in Arizona. It's not humid. It's just hot and sweaty balls. So uh, anyways, I'm not sure where I was going with that. But I think the summer solstice is like around the corner too. Isn't that on Thursday? Anyways, uh, good day everyone and welcome to the Real Film Nerds podcast where we talk about movies. Uh, me and my good buddy, Mysterious Mike Talent, right here. Hey, everybody. Matt, dude, I finally did it. Crapped yourself? I picked a winner, dude. This you is the number a winner. one no, number one movie in America and the biggest movie so far this year. Okay, so you weren't taking, talking about picking your nose then? No, no, I was not. Not this time. Not digging for gold. Nope, not digging for gold. Isn't that a California thing? No, or it's a, you know, a lady thing. Oh, okay. All right. Or uh, it could be a man thing, because a, a, a poor dude could go after a chick with the monies. Oh, yeah, a gold digger, yeah. All right, yeah. Gotcha. All right. Matt, you're getting us off topic way early. Right, right off the bat, dude. I'm just trying here. I'm trying here. So anyways, I was just saying how, you know, we're a podcast and we talk about movies. We're not movie critics. We're not, I guess we're movie reviewers because we talk about movies. We're just two regular dudes that like to watch movies and discuss them because we'd be doing this even without doing a podcast. So for Real Film Nerds episode number 378, Mike shoved his finger up his nose and picked a winner with this week's film by Pixar, Inside Out number two. Mike, why don't you break it down? All right, Matt. So this was written by Kelsey, or directed by Kelsey Mann, uh, written by Meg LaFauve, uh, David Holstein, and Kelsey Mann. This movie is starring Amy Poehler, Maya Hawk, Kensington Tillman, uh, Tony Hale, Louis Black, Phyllis Smith... Uh, there's quite a few people in this, uh, and, uh, Yvette Nicole Brown, Ron, uh, Funches, and this movie, uh, follows Riley in her teenage years encountering new emotions. Okay, Mike, so when was the last time you watched the first Inside Out? Uh, when it came out about 10 years ago. Okay, so I just recently watched it because I had never seen it before. So I watched it before this film over last weekend. Yeah, I think you two said you watched ago. it last. Yeah, I think you watched it last week or two weekends ago. Two weekends ago, yeah. So, so and uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought the original was very smart and very funny and very unique storytelling. And uh, Inside Out 2, I think, continues that journey but not quite as well as the original. I mean, it's hard to beat something creative and interesting and intriguing like the original. I definitely think it adds to it. I think it helps build on the story and build on the universe and build on these emotion characters, I guess you would say. Yeah. But uh, uh, I still, the, the one thing I kind of found lacking that I thought was in plenty of abundance in the original was humor. There's, there's humor in this, but not like the first one where there's like silly humor and goofy humor and like kid kind of humor and just everybody having a good time. There's humor in this one as well, just not at the level of the first one. And I think that's one of the detractors for me. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, th this one had, you know, it has some situational humor and some other things, but I, I guess you're right, Matt. It's a lot more serious and i guess it's it's partly because of the topic matter of adolescence and everything that comes with that these new emotions and and things like that i really i really liked how some of the those things are portrayed in this movie it, it, i don't know there's a lot of fun uh on some of that stuff uh like uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to get into too too much things without spoiling it, Matt. But, um, so Matt, seeing both of the the movies uh, back to back like you did, 
Uh, how did you feel about this one? And was your theater busy? Oh, yeah. Our, our theater here in Prescott, I went to a mid-show. I didn't go to the latest show. I didn't go to the earliest show on Thursday. I went to the mid-show. I went to a 6.15, 6.30, something like that. It was pretty well packed. There was a lot of kids in there. Um, I think a lot of movie that we're going to probably talk about later, but we've already reviewed this year. Um, is this a dense topic? Um, I think you need to know what age group you're bringing in to see a film like this. I think probably like five and under might be a little much for them. You know, maybe even elementary school age, maybe a little bit. Definitely middle school, definitely high school. I think that's more the targeted audience for a film like this. Uh, Definitely adults, you know, I mean, dealing with emotions and the different things that go on and how they try and break it down and explain it. But uh, I feel the first one was more geared towards kids. This one is more geared towards uh, middle school. And, you know, that's the age of our uh, main character, our protagonist in the film. Granted, the main character is actually probably the emotions. But still, it's Riley's story. She's really kind of the main character. These are things going on in her head. So I think the age group that should go see it is the age group that uh, our main character is, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, like your tweens or, or, or early teens kind of uh, age group. I, I would say the same, Matt. Um, in my theater that I was attending, I saw a, I guess, primetime showtime is like 8, 8.30 or something, 8.20. And it was packed. Like, I, I got a seat, but like, it, it was like, it was very packed. And I don't think the theater was ready for it. Because normally, you know, I like get some popcorn some snacks you know the i was myself running a little bit late but the line was super super long the longest i've ever seen it uh so i had to skip the snacks go to the movie like ever ever or just since covid well so it's kind of a tricky question matt because my particular theater just changed the way they did their line so it is the busiest I've seen it ever with the new line change. But okay. that's only, the line change only happened, I think, of uh, like Christmas season of, of last year. And what what they did is they made it into a single line that has a little thing that tells you which like person to go to. So like you don't pick like a line and hope you get a fast one. Everyone starts in like one line and then it right at the end it gets divided into different people. I think it's a better flow. It's like the uh, DMV. Yeah, yeah, it's like the DMV. And then when you walk through the little snaky part, the little like Disneyland inspired snaky part, they have concessions that you can just grab and go. So like they they they've changed like the style of it. Like so you can grab all your candies yourself. As yeah, you're going I know. To I've the... seen that at, at some of the... Because you go to Cinemark, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. at Cinemark, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that at some of the Cinemarks and AMCs over here in Arizona doing that. Yeah, so you, you go through, you enter the line, and you can grab um, your candies and ice cream and pizza, whatever, and then you get up to the front, and basically they give you soda and popcorn, and that's it. Maybe a hot dog or whatever. And then if you want, like, fancy gourmet food, you can order that there, but you got to go pick that up, like, somewhere else. Like, because they have, like, a kitchen somewhere. So, like, gourmet foods like a cheesesteak or burger or things like that. Now, now my preferred theater here in Arizona is Harkins, of course, Mike. Of course. They don't do that yet. So, you know. But the one thing we do here, at least in Prescott, or try to do at the Prescott Valley Harkins is do the center line thing and everybody just takes their turn going in. But again, most of the time when I'm there, it's not jam-packed with people. Maybe it's just people are not going to the theaters like they should here. But there, like I said, there was a bunch of people at this one. So, I mean, obviously, I mean, this is a good segue, Mike. Why don't you talk about the box office numbers? Because I know you were touting that you picked a good one earlier. What do you mean by that? Oh, so so Matt, talking about box office numbers, uh, this is the the biggest movie to hit this year. So it brought in. Um, let me get the exact number here, Matt. It brought in one hundred and fifty four million dollars, 
And this is the best opening since Barbie, which was, I think, was at 7-6 last year. It was like right after July when Oppenheimer, the well, the Barbieheimer, uh, Oppenheimer yeah, it was and summer Barbie last year. Yeah. came out. It was, I believe it was July or early July. And I remember going to that screening and everybody was dressed up in pink and stuff. And I was like, I think this movie's going to do really well. And I was going to see, I think... I was going to see uh, Oppenheimer that day, and I saw Barbie a couple days later. But it was everyone that night was going to Barbie. So, like, I picked the opposite. So I won on that that occasion as far as attending. Well, that's like, also how we reviewed it. We reviewed Oppenheimer first and then Barbie. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, yeah, so this movie did well. And then uh, it's international numbers uh, so far, and it's not opened in everywhere uh, worldwide yet. It's $294 million. So Pixar is definitely happy they have a winner on their hands because it's been a while. So, Mike, talking about winners and kids' movies, what do you think about a kids' movie giveaway for a kids' movie review? Oh, man, I think that's a great idea, Matt. What do we got? So, Mike, our good friends over at Paramount Pictures reached out and said, Hey, we know you guys reviewed this movie recently. How would you like to give it away for us? And I went, F yeah, I want to give it away. I didn't say that, actually. I said, yes, we will gladly help you with your promotion. But, Mike, from Real Film and Nerds, episode number 374... We're giving away copies, digital download copies. So, you know, Voodoo Code, uh, uh, you know, wherever your digital retailers are, you know, the many different ones, Fandango. I don't think it's Voodoo anymore. They think Fandango bought them. But uh, we're giving away digital codes for if. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so what What do we, what, what, what should, should we have the listeners do to get it, dude? Mike, there's so much we can pick from. So much. We got John Krasinski. We got Ryan Reynolds. We got, you know, so many people were in if. But, That's true. Mike, I'm going to leave it up to you because you are the official Real Film Nerds contest coordinator. Uh, no, contest entry coordinator. There we go. That's what oh, it needs to be. Yeah. Contest entry coordinator. I like it, dude. I like it. I like, I mean, also talent slash talent slash talent yes content contest entry coordinator slash the talent mysterious mike talent uh go ahead i know you have something up your sleeve because you're smart you're so much smarter than me mike uh just ask my dad he'll agree with me um mike what what should our listeners do what should they email you to be entered in our drawing to get a copy of if Oh man, all this pressure, man! I feel like, woo, all this stuff weighing down on me. I I don't know if I can come up with something, but ah, uh, I guess I'll just. The first thing that popped in my head, Matt, was, why don't we just have Ryan Reynolds' first feature-length movie? If our listeners could provide us that detail, we will put him in to the entry for this fantastic movie. If. So, Mike, is that because Ryan Reynolds is coming out with his second film here next month of the year? Uh, sure. I mean, Ryan Reynolds is a busy guy, and Deadpool and Wolverine, I, I think, is the, uh, what do you think, the most anticipated summer blockbuster, would you say? Yeah, I think it'll possibly be the movie of the year. I don't, I don't want to knock Inside Out 2. But I think uh, if anything is going to save the Marvel Cinematic Universe, especially now after Disney's latest blunder with uh, the latest Star Wars show. Ooh, dude, I, I don't know if you're watching it, but the Acolyte is really difficult to stomach. It's pretty rough. It's, no, like, a no. CW, it's like a CW TV show on Disney+. Plus. It's pretty rough. Oh, man. I, I have not uh, seen that one. I think I saw some advertisements on the old uh, D+. Plus. Yeah, yeah. Episode 3 came out this week, last week, something like that. So they're up to three episodes of eight, I think. And it's a slog, dude. It's a difficult watch. But anyways, I, I don't mean to throw MCU in with Star Wars, but those are two very big franchises that Disney bought and has slowly run one of them into the ground and 
now Marvel is quickly following behind. And uh, they both are very beloved franchises to me. So I hope that they can turn it around. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about our giveaway for if from our buddies at Paramount Pictures. So, Mike, they need to email you, Mike at realfilmnerds.com, what Ryan Reynolds' first feature length film was. Now, that means a film that was in the theaters, not on TV, right? That is correct. Okay. All right. Well, let me get to the business and then we can proceed along with Real Film Nerds Podcast, episode number 378. Bring home if. Buy on Digital Now, starring Kaylee Fleming, Ryan Reynolds, John Krasinski, and Steve Carell. If is a heartwarming and hilarious tale about a girl who embarks on a magical adventure to reconnect imaginary friends with their kids. Buy what the film critics are calling perfect for the whole family and get over 40 minutes of bonus features. Written and directed by John Krasinski. Available at participating retailers. Buy If on digital today. It is rated pg and it is from our good friends over at Paramount Pictures. All right. Once again, Paramount Pictures ro- hooking us up, so thank you. And Matt, I think I think we've jabbered on enough without doing our, uh, our, our next segment so we can start spoiling the movie. So, Matt, what are you drinking this, this morning, evening, afternoon? Ah. <sighs> Well, Mike, thank you for asking. I am drinking a muddy beer from the Mud Shark Brewery called Scorpion Amber. Ooh, that sounds great. I know you like your ambers. Yeah, dude. Did you go to Mud Shark when you were in uh, Havasu, what, a few months ago? Uh, no, no, I don't think. No, we, we went to, we did go to a brewery. I, it wasn't Mud Shark. Shame. Um, yeah, we only went to one brewery, and uh, yeah, that's that's all we got to, and it was not Mud Shark. I'm I'm sorry, man. Shame. Yeah, I like Mud Shark. I think it's a pretty good spot. So, uh, I haven't been to the physical brewery yet myself. I have just drank several of their beers, and uh, they are quite delicious. So, uh, thank you, Mud Shark, for uh, making me buy your beer for this podcast, Mike. Let me guess, Summer Shandy. Yes, Matt, Matt. I think now that it is summer, it's time to go into fall. So I'm I'm excited. I think I think the pumpkin beers should be hitting the shelves. It's it's almost fourth of July, right? So everyone thinks fourth of July and pumpkin. So I'm thinking they're gonna have pumpkin on the shelf by fourth of July. But we'll see. If not, I will change it up for next week. Oh, I know you won't. It's fine, Mike. It's okay. We'll forgive you. We know you like your beers that are on sale that you get a lot of for a little bit of money or lesser money. Yeah. Well, I mean, as as everyone knows, everything's gotten more expensive. So that sixer is quite expensive these days. I, I don't understand that. I'm, Mike, you're still rich, though. Like, for those of you who don't know, Mike is a baller. Like, he has a personal helicopter, a Lambo, kids, a house, a wife. I mean, he's living everybody's dream. He really is. Yes. Yes, I am. I'm living your dream, man. Pretty much, yeah. And my father's dream. Well, not not my father's dream. My father's dream for his son. Yeah. That's why he calls you his son. Speaking of that, Mike, you know it was Father's Day on Sunday. Yeah. This dad joke better be fucking incredible. Uh, <laughs> it's it's okay. It's it's an inside out joke. Mike, this is what your your sixth Father's Day or is your fifth? Uh, this one is my fifth Father's Day. Technically, because oh, I was yeah. trying to do the timing based yeah, on I, age. I think it's my fifth. I think it's my fifth Father's Day. Because you know, when your son was born, you would have been a father for Father's Day, but he wasn't one yet. So you have to add a year to when he was born. Okay. Yeah. So five, dude. Okay. All right. I don't know how to math very well. So anyways, all right, Mike, what is this week's just inside out uh, dad joke? I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand, though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh, though. Dad jokes. All right, dude, Matt. Why did Joy bring a ladder to work? 
uh, to get. Well, if you watch in the first one, she's trying to get back up to the uh, control center. Because she heard the job has its ups and downs. You know, I really expected more the week of Father's Day, Mike. I really did. <laughs> Dude, that is that is that is tip top dad quality. You need to return the Lambo. <laughs> I'm sorry. That joke was too bad, Mike. You take it back. Take it back. <laughs> All right. I can't afford the oil changes anyway. <laughs> you know, some people, they buy a car and they're like, they have to change the tires. They're like, time for a new car. I'm like, oh, time for an oil change. Got to get a new one. Dude, that's how rich you are? You just buy a new car every single time you got to get an oil change? That's wild. Damn, Mike. Jesus, I knew you were talented, but holy hell. Yeah, doesn't everybody get a new car every 3,000 miles? No. I've never owned a new car in my entire life, and I don't think I ever will either. Have you not ever owned a new, brand new car? Never. Not once. I'm at the point where I'm trying to figure out uh, which one to sell so that I can keep my house going. <laughs> it might keep my mortgage. But anyways, I, I will not uh, be negative, Mike. I will be positive today. I am positive that you found the Marvel Cinematic Universe tie-in for... Inside Out Part 2. Uh, I, I did. I did. Um, it was our writer, uh, Megan... Uh, oh, oh, I'm... In, I'm uh, Really, oh, dude? You already screwed up her name. I, I'm, I'm already screwed so up her name. We spent so long looking that up, Mike. <laughs> Lafro, La, 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 La I like Lafro. Let's just keep it with Lafro. Ah, Lafou. Sounds like a French Afro. Yeah. <laughs> Meg Lafro, Lafou. La, La, oh man, I'm already screwing it up. Anyway, she she uh, wrote the story for Captain Marvel. Okay, good job, Mike. Meg Lafro, a French Afro. Got it. That's going down in the show notes right there, buddy. All right. I like that. All right, great. Okay, so that means we are now in the spoiler section. So, Mike, you're the one that likes to spoil things. Uh, ready, set, uh, spoil? I don't know. Talk? All right, dude. Uh, I, I, I thought this was fun because I really liked uh, Anxiety's character and uh, and Ennui. I thought that was uh, those. I thought those characters were a lot of fun uh, in this. I uh, I don't know. There's 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 lots of creative things like uh, the sarcasm. Yeah, dude, all that stuff is in the trailer. Why you were worried about spoiling that, dude? I don't know, man. It's just I don't. I, I worry because I I don't even think I saw the trailer, man. I just I went and saw this movie based on the first movie. Dude, you, well I know you do show up late. You usually don't see trailers. I show up on time, and I'm usually walking in through the trailers. So, yeah, I I, I show up late. I don't always intend to, but sometimes with the uh, the drive to get to the theater and the uh, putting the little uh, little humans to sleep. There's not a lot of extra time, so I'm sometimes running a little late. Luckily, and then you got to fluff your Lafro. My uh, my theater of choice has twenty to twenty five minutes of trailers, so when it actually says it starts, I don't. I really don't have to be there for twenty minutes. It's a lot of trailers, man, or ads, because I know they do ads and then trailers, because that's what they do they, at your former employer down in yeah, Vista. They, they do some ads, uh, for sure. Yes, they do some ads. Yes, um, and uh, you know, the other, you know, when I walked into the Cinemark and it was super packed, I was remembering my theater days when it was super busy and I was working. I was like, oh, were you starting to I have remember, a panic attack? I remember those days, man. I remember the old Harkins in in in, uh, in Flagstaff. There would be. Um, there was 10 concession lines and all of them would be all the way through the whole lobby. Like they'd be all the way backed up to the other side. 
They'd be like, dang, this is going to suck. Now, you worked at the Harkins that was uh, by campus, right? You didn't work at the new one. Yeah, they they hadn't built it. The, my old uh, theater uh, in Flag is now uh, DMV, I think. Uh, last time I was up there, it was empty, but it, it's been a while since I drove over there. Uh, I did go to the new one. I didn't watch a film there, but I drove by the new one, and it's like on the far side of town, man. I mean, it's yeah, it's close so- to the New Mexico border. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I... I think that was a mistake. They moved it away from the college because uh, the college was a ton of business. Well, uh, yeah, dude, I mean, the kids would just walk there. The kids that are staying in the dorms, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, no, y- and you could walk there pretty easy, even in terrible weather. Well, I know they use buses, just like ASU and all them, to go around. Actually, that was one thing that freaked me out last time I was in Tempe. They don't really have buses anymore. They have these trolleys that are like on tracks, but they're not on tracks. It's the weirdest thing. Oh, but is it like strung together? Is it kind of like yeah. a whole bunch? Oh, yeah. weird, dude. It's weird. It was really strange to me seeing that go up and down Mill Avenue. They didn't have the ASU buses, at least when I was there. But anyways, to get back on topic, uh, sorry, I've thrown us off a few times, but Inside Out too. Inside Out too, man. Yeah. Uh, Your... Okay. So I would say the one thing that kind of bugged me, well, there's several things that kind of bugged me, but uh, from a writing standpoint, anxiety it makes sense though. Just kind of took over the whole show. Uh, I wanted more of all the emotions, and then actually the one that bothered me the most in the first one, you get to see everyone's like emotions. Like they even have a bit where they show like dogs' emotions and they show like all these different people's emotions. You didn't oh, yeah. really have that in this. You barely saw the dad and the mom's emotions, and that's what a lot of that humor was was seeing the age difference. Ah, uh, yes. You're right. They did only have a couple, like, uh, insider, uh, I- inside other people's heads. Yeah, um, and it, I really yeah. kind of missed that. I wish they would have had more of that in this film, because it would have been fun to see other people's anxiety. Now, granted, the whole thing of anxiety taking over her and running the show is on point, like, exactly what anxiety does to all of us. Yeah, I... Uh... I enjoyed the anxiety and, and I liked, uh, the alarm, like I liked, um, the introduction of adolescence and like how it was an alarm and like there was the, like that introduction sequence I, I thought was great. Oh, it was like, very good. With, and then, uh, her, you know, in bed in the real world, just, that was fantastic. And that was one of the times where you saw the mom's reactions. And again, all that was actually in the trailer, Mike. Dang. Okay, well, I guess everything, uh, a lot of the good scenes were in the trailer, huh? Not all of them, but there was a chunk. Yeah, there was a pretty good chunk. Hmm. All right, all right. Well, uh, I kind of thought it was funny that um, anxiety and and the other emotions, like, kicked out all the other, like, emotions and, like, sent them to the back of the, the, the archived emotions and... And like bottling up everything. I kind of like the idea of like how people bottle up stuff and then it like got released. Like that was interesting. There's it it some, some deep things in there. Well, that was one of the things I was, I was going to interrupt you with. But yeah, no, that they literally said bottled up and locked away. And that was on point, especially, especially a young kid going through that. But uh, we all bottle up our emotions. Oh, I do. I don't know about everybody. Some people are better at it than I am. Then some some people are better than others at not bottling their stuff up, but uh, I think especially being a dude and being a dude that was raised by parents that were grew up in the fifties, yeah, I've I was very much taught to bottle everything up. So yeah, I mean I thought it was great, you know that representation, but again, there's just I wanted I wanted more humor. I wanted more. I don't know. I wanted more, okay. but okay, okay. That there's one thing I do want to say. So, Mike, did you see the little Pixar short that they did on Disney Plus for Inside Out, the first one? Uh, I saw it back in the day. Okay, I, I haven't seen it yet. So you did see it. So it's her like going out on like her first date with a boy, and so that was completely misleading because everyone thought this was going to be about her dating. And it was not. It was about friendships and moving on in life. 
and uh, trying to hold on to friendships while going to a different school and all that. I thought it was a much better topic than her dating. And I got, you know, kind of blindsided in a way because they went that route instead of her being attracted to boys and finding boys and going out on dates. I thought this was way better. And it was interesting how it took place over one weekend, too. Yeah, it was like a transitional time in her life where she's just finished eighth grade. She's going to high school. And now she's also getting uh, hitting the uh, adolescence hard and like all kinds of like just a lot of things. Friends are changing. Her her idol is going to be there. And, it, it, you know, that was that was all interesting stuff, you know, and like um, how how your emotions affect how you play sports and stuff like totally like uh, I liked some of that stuff like when you play angry and like well like, it's I more like, than just sports Mike think about it just even going to class or reading or doing homework or spending time with your friends you know your emotions change all of that stuff and I think they use sports as the analogy to connect all the other things of her life the aspect of her life in one tight little neat package over a weekend i mean i think the writing was one of the best parts of the whole thing i just wish there was more humor to it but i like that they didn't lean heavy on the oh i love boys i'm chasing boys that kind of stuff because i thought that's what it was going to be oh yeah no i i think this was much better topic in the way they approached it you know um about the friends and the transitional period in your life and like all kinds of stuff like it was great yeah, dude. Um, it was very, very well done from that aspect. Again, beautiful film. I, I don't know how Pixar, Pixar does it, but I mean, my God, dude, it, beautiful the whole thing. Uh, oh, cinematography, yeah. the artwork, the everything. It's just incredible. They just get better and better and better every year. You know, they put out a new film. Um, the voice acting was great. Uh, overall, this was a pretty good movie. I just wish there was more personally humor and a little bit more for the younger kids, a little more slapsticky, a little more goofy. Other than that, I think this is, you know, one next to the original, one of the top Pixar films for sure. Not my favorite, but it's it's in the top ten for sure. Yeah, no, it was, it was a good movie. It was a very good movie. It was. It's nice also that it's doing well because I wasn't sure if any movie was going to do that great until Wolverine and. And Deadpool came out, so it's good to have at least a movie doing okay to to hold us until the uh, Wolverine and, and Deadpool comes out. And uh, Matt, what are we watching this next week? Is this the 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 Riders? Is that the the next movie? Yeah, the Bike Riders. I'm excited for this one. I again, you don't watch trailers, I guess, but uh, this is Tom Hardy and uh, Austin Butler. Uh, I don't know if it's based on a true story or not. I need to kind of research that a little bit, but I kind of don't because I don't want to ruin the film. So I might not. I might just leave it alone and just go watch it. But it's uh, based around a a Midwestern motorcycle clubs, uh, specifically the Vandals. And so I'm not sure if it's trying to be a true story of the Vandals or not. I'm not sure. But um, again, I don't know if I want to know. I want to kind of let the movie stand on its own merits and tell me the story that it's intending to tell. But the trailers look fantastic. Tom Hardy does his weird-ass voice that he does in Venom, which maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. It worked pretty good in Venom. So we'll see how it goes. Um, Austin Butler is trying not to sound like Elvis, but the weird thing is, is that's how he normally talks. So we'll see. We'll see, man. It looks like a good movie. Um, It's rated R. It is not for the faint of heart. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of violence and murdering and drinking and, you know, it's a motorcycle gang movie. It'll be yeah. It'll be debauchery. Good. Yeah, I think Son, it'll be good. Sons of Anarchy in two hours. Yeah, I don't know if I go that far, but yeah, the start of Sons of Anarchy in two hours. How's that? All right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, very cool. Um, I look forward to seeing that. It, I have seen at least one trailer for it. It looks interesting. I'm not sure what to make of it. So. It, uh, it looked like they rode motorcycles with like no protective gear at all, which is like, I don't know. It looks so old fashioned to me, Matt, where like they just are, they have nothing like, oh man, get an accident and that's end. Yeah. That's how it used to be. That's how a lot of people still ride here. 
The only thing, you know, in Arizona that they require by law is glasses. Ah. Okay. Well, cool. No, um, <laughs> no it's not. <laughs> but, hey, you know, it keeps our organ donor uh, uh, program alive and well in Arizona. <laughs> That's that's right. That's <laughs> morbidly correct. Okay, uh, s- Mike. So uh, I want your reels. Is that what you're going to tell uh, me? Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you your reels. No, too. I want yours. You I want, want yours mine? first because you're the talented one with the Lambo. All right. Well, the Lambo is rating uh, Inside Out two with four reels out of five. Four out of five. Okay. I was I was a little con- I was a little confused. Okay, got it, got it. What did you give the first one? I don't know, dude. Uh, I haven't. I, we didn't watch it on the pod. Well, I know. I guess probably was, pro- the pod uh, didn't it, exist when it came out, dude. Pr- pr- <laughs> probably five reels. I would say it was really good. Yeah. Okay, I'm just curious because I give this one three and a half because I gave the original four, and this one is not as good as the original. All right. So cool. there you go, Mike. Another Real Film Nerds podcast in the can. All right. In the books, in the cloud. Aha. In the cloud. On the website yes. that works, and my personal website doesn't work. But it, we'll get it figured out. We'll get it figured out. Um, all right. Well, uh, I already told everybody about the bike riders. Make sure to email me, Mike, at Real Film Nerds, for our giveaway for if. Tell me ryan reynolds first feature movie and you'll be entered in to win a digital download of the movie if and i think that's that's about it matt right i I should wrap it up as far as i could tell yes sir all right well thanks for listening everybody make sure to follow us on instagram twitter x meta facebook whatever and uh We'll catch you on our next pod, The Bike Riders. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. Welcome, everyone, to Ma Hinshaw Loses Her Cookies, episode 68. Inside out. How are you this morning, Matt? This morning? Have you been drinking? Plus, you missed up. It was not Inside Out. It's Inside Out 2. This is the sequel. Oh, crummy buttons. Now I have to redo it. Or did you not go to the theaters? I went to the theaters. I sat through the whole thing. Did you fall asleep? No. Was I there didn't. any new? Was there any nudity? Oh heck no! What about Jason Mimosa? He was in that. Okay, there you go. Ma Hinshaw podcast episode number sixty-eight. Thanks everybody for listening. We got all the topics covered, right? Jason Mimosa wasn't in that, was he? No, but that's what we talk about on your podcast: is nudity, Jason Mimosa, and uh. No. Go ahead. Six pack abs. There you go. Oh, Jesus. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, Ma, let's go. Uh, let's get you talking about Inside Out 2, the kids' movie by Pixar. Do you know that it is the top grossing movie since Barbie last year? I know. $100,000 plus dollars. It made nope. more than. Of course, you know. it made $100,000 plus dollars. It made $154 million. Oh, well, anyhow. Okay, what that. <laughs> There's a lot more zeros on a million than there is on 100,000. Oh, okay. Well, uh, gee, will occurs. I don't know why, but okay. For those of you who are counting, there's six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> God, this is going to be as much of a mess as ours, Mike and I's pod was. I, I was all over the place, and Mike didn't help. He kept throwing me off, too. So this is just going to be a shit show of a couple podcasts. So everybody might as well skip ahead to next week where we talk about the bike riders. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, at least well, you got a shirt on, and I'm not seeing 
Thank you. I, the shush. twins of Ma Hinshaw, which shush, that's shush. just that's just terrible, Ma. Shush. Do not talk about my twins. Quiet. Well, Quit why it. do you why do you podcast through Skype not wearing a shirt? I'm wearing my jammies. I'm okay. an old man. I I'm don't need decent. to see those things. It's foul. Foul, I'm, foul, foul. I'm a decent mom. I just have my jammy top on. That's all. I'm comfy. Whatever. Anyway, it could be worse. I could be wearing my bikini bathing suit, which would really make you nauseous. So. I don't know anyway. if I can get too much worse. I no. just ate dinner. I know. Anyway. Okay. So can we get okay. back on topic? Yes, we're on topic. Now, I liked Riley, uh, but I think she could have had more emotional swings. She didn't have a whole lot of tantrums in my book. Most teenage women are uh, have a tantrum a day or more. Um, yes, sh- there were a lot of emotions. Um, I tried to count them. Like Joy was, you know, and she was the main emotion that kept trying to save Riley. I understand that and get her happy and and everything like that but uh you know and i i loved anxiety i think that's what he was with the foofy red hair foof all over and it was a uh, woman but yes it was a woman yeah the person that voices anxiety is a woman that is <gasps> maya hawk she's a, sh- a very lovely cute young woman shocker Pardon me. I did not realize that. You know what? I just realized you talking about uh, anxiety is I forgot to bring this up during uh, my podcast with Mike. I didn't talk about the panic attack and how I didn't like them showing a 13 year old girl having a panic attack. I thought that was a little extreme. I forgot to bring that up. I talked about it on the radio, but I didn't talk about it on the podcast. He has a daughter. He might as well face it. Uh, Teenager girls have panic attacks all the time. Yes, but not at the age of 13, Mom. That's why I thought it was a little too far to go in the film. Yeah, okay. I agree with that one. Yeah. And there were other things that I thought was not really... I I don't care about Mike, Mom. I'm talking about the film. Yeah, me too. I mean, I care about Mike. He's my best friend, but yes. I mean, and she was... So worried about the girls, the high school girls, and they got, they thought she was from uh, Michigan and she was from Minnesota and she would not correct them. She was too afraid. I guess that was fear that came in there. I don't know. Yeah, but but that that wasn't what she was freaking out about. No. She was freaking out about that and about 12 other things. That's why it induced a panic attack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And really, I didn't think she should have snuck into the coach's office and read her notebook and all that stuff. I thought that was kind of a bad example to set. You know, that that should not be done. And she didn't get caught or reprimanded or anything, you know. I would have had an anxiety attack doing that. That's not good. But that's me. You know. Honesty. Wait. Where was the honesty emotion? I missed it. Well, anyhow. Yeah. And Joy was, uh, I. she was great. And shoot, I'm trying to think of who she was. But anyway, she was really clear through the movie. Kept trying to save her and bring her to joy and all, you know. Well, Mom, the actress that voices Joy is probably the biggest name on the entire film. It's Amy Poehler. Yeah, Amy Poehler. That's what I was trying to look it up. I had it written down in case I forgot, which I did. But anyhow, yeah, Amy did a great job. Oh, and I love the balls. That was cool. (laughs) Did you like the mountains of balls? Well, do you understand that's they're orbs of memories? That's what those are? I know that's what they are. But they're balls. And I thought it was fun. It reminded me of when 
kids used to get into those balls and climb around, you know. That was fun. I liked it. And she sure had a lot of memories and anxieties and everything else. Yeah. But I thought that was really cool. Didn't you? Yeah, it was fine. I mean, it was in the first one. It wasn't anything new. Oh, well, I didn't. Ex- I don't know. I didn't care if it was new or old. I just thought it was fun. You know. I always wanted to be a little kid and jump into the balls and float around and, you know, whatever. But I was too old. They didn't invent those back in my day. Oh, well. So anyway, um, I don't know. I'm glad she got back together with her friends eventually. Uh, I wasn't that excited about this movie. I thought it was okay. But I and I didn't think it was uh, geared to young kids. Um, I don't know, I guess. I thought maybe, you know, 9, 10, 11 year olds or something like that that are going into being in middle school. Right. So the same age as the main character of the film. Right. Which is what it's intended for. Well, okay, that's good then. But I think a lot of people brought their little ones and well, be that here nor there i don't know that they were that fascinated but hey they must have been because all these people went to the movie and it made billions of dollars so you know i guess the little ones liked it but i i would have thought you would kind well, of how do you know it was all little ones mom Ooh, who do you know who went to the movies it might have been all adults heck i don't know who right know so why are you why are you making assumptions Okay, I'm not assumptioning. Okay. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you mean assuming? Yes, that. <laughs> wow. We're not even at 15 minutes yet, and I'm already done. Oh, good. Well, see, it's shorter than usual. No, you're being a nut. <laughs> okay. God, what I thought there? mine went bad. Yours is just as bad, if not worse. Oh, really? Oh, no. Huh. I thought her parents were not there for her enough, too either who Mom, the it? whole film takes place over three days well okay they you wanted her to be at hockey camp did you sit there when i did basketball camp or any of the other camps i did when i was a kid oh i didn't know see nothing. so you weren't there for me either see so now you understand why i'm so damaged oh yeah excuses excuses anyway see folks this oh, is why oh. i see seek lots of medical attention look at how my mother treats me hey but no i'm talking about when when she first moved to san francisco and stuff yes but that was the first film well oh whoops i got okay never mind never mind you know by now she was had a couple of friends okay yeah the second one that's true and I just didn't think they were all that much supportive of her, but that's okay. You know, we all have our opinions, right? Uh, and did you think there was a whole bunch of laughs in that? I don't know. I didn't think there were. No, I thought the first one had a lot more humor in it. This one had a lot of funny parts and funny scenes and things, mm-hmm. but not at the level of the first one. The first one, I think, was intended for a younger audience. Again, I'm reiterating what I talked about in the my podcast, I'm just because you didn't hear it and you weren't there. No. But the first one is intended for a younger audience because that's the age that the main character is. In mm-hmm. this film, it is intended for a uh, young teenager audience going middle school, high school age audience. Uh, hence the reason why there's not quite as much humor, but there's a whole lot of really dense, dark, difficult topics in this one that try to help explain why the main character is feeling the way she is. And maybe that's was the intention was to do that for the kids that are growing at the same age rate as her. Well, that's true. So what's the next age rate going to be when they make number three inside out college students or something? Probably high school going into college and maybe she'll 
be having sex the first time. I don't know. No. Well, it's anyhow. Pixar. I don't think they'll go that risque. I hope not. No. Not at all. Shame. Anyway. All righty. Well, I um, um, have nothing else much to say. I mean, it was good. It was so colorful. That was very, very pretty. The emotions were all fun. You know, fear and, you know, anxiety, of course, and all of them. They were real cool. So, right, Matt? Yes, Mother. So why don't you tell your audience how many cookies you give it and what kind of cookies are you do you have this week? Are they did you just go to the store and buy Oreos or Chips Ahoy? Ugh, or Hydrox? No. no, actually lemon Oreos, but I'm trying to find my ginger cookie recipe and I want to make ginger cookies and I may have to get it online because I can't find my recipe, which is frustrating me. But well, then it, it's not your recipe if you get it online. Well, I know it's not. Hey, my peanut butter cookie recipe was from when I was in grade school. <laughs> my gosh, that's an old one. The teacher's probably gone to her great reward by now. <laughs> anyway, um, I give it I have four cookies because I thought it was good, but I didn't think it was way good so that's why i gave it a four okay so you gave it four lemon oreo cookies right you know that's the same rating mysterious mike talent gave it oh <gasps> he, he loved it he thought it was great i thought it was good i mean i did think it was good but i did have some issues with some of it that's all you know i have to be honest that's there you go I didn't fall asleep. That's a plus. And the movie was full. And the kids weren't noisy. They, what's funny is none of them were noisy. It was just quiet. You know, I didn't even hear all that many laughs or stuff like that. It was just, and there was like 50 some people in the movie. Well, was your, your sold out? You, I don't know if they were sold out, but. I know there was at least 50 tickets so because my husband counted them. Anyway. Is that, well, how full was the theater then? Was that 100% full, 90%, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30? Um, I would say probably 80%, probably. Yep. Oh, well, that's good. See, now you know why I made $155 million over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Oh, well, I won't ask if Mike took his kids or not. No, he did not. Mike goes on Thursday nights after he puts the kids to sleep. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for clarifying that. Well, anyway, for... You know, if you listen to the podcast you're on, you would know these things because Mike talks about it. Well, I'll listen to it when you have it, whatever, put on there and all that I stuff. I put them up every Wednesday at 7 a.m. Well, I know, but this one isn't on there yet. Yeah, but he's talked about it in previous episodes. He did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Well, anyway, I didn't. Again, folks, this is why you don't do drugs. (laughs) You don't be old either. Well, you have to get old, but not this old. I'm old. Mom, if you're not getting old, you're dying. You're dead. So you got to get old. That's the rule. No, that's it. True. I'm getting old. So anyway, thank you, Matt. And our movie next week is Bike Riders. With, uh, I don't know, uh, Austin Butler. I, uh-huh. I gotta Google him cause I don't remember what he looks like. He's from, he's the dude that played Elvis. Oh, then I know what he looks like. I loved him. I loved Elvis. He was very good in that. Ooh, well, this ought to be good. Oh, Jody boy. Comer, Austin Butler, and Tom Hardy are the main actors. There's also Ooh. Michael Shannon, uh, Norman Reedus. There's a lot of really big, well-known actors in here. So, and this takes place when you were in college. Uh, are you sure? The sixties. Yeah. Okay. I was in college or out or working. I don't know. 
I, I thought it was made in 1969. It is, isn't that what they said the time frame was? I don't remember. If that's the I'm case. Reading, I'm looking at IMDb right now. I know it takes place in the Midwest Motorcycle Club known as the Vandals. Ooh. <laughs> but I think it's supposed to take place in the 60s. Well, cool. Because, yeah, I was in college in the early 60s. Boy, am I old. Anyway. Damn right. Oh, yep. Year is 1968. I told you. So, hey. yeah, you would have been you would have been married. Working. Almost. No, I wasn't married. married. No, I wasn't married. I was working. Almost married. You're married in 69. Right. May of 69. That's so how I- much of a horn dog Ma Hinshaw is. She had what? to get wait until the year 1969 to get married. Terrible. Well. Shameful. It's when I met your dad. What can I say? Uh-huh. <laughs> And you're like, this is the perfect year. 69, dude. Let's do it. Well, he was cute back then. Well, anyway, <laughs> go watch this movie and we'll see what I think. And I'll probably pick on the old stuff or whatever they show. I don't know. So that means they got to be old motorcycles, too. Oh, dear. I don't know them from back then. You, well, we all know you rode on a lot of them. Never got on a motorcycle ever. Oh, yeah, you were too busy? Hmm. Been in a speed in 69. boat. Been in a regular boat, but not, no. Mm-mm. We won't talk about your dating life. We'll do that in another episode. Oh, no, we won't. That's that's verboten. Thank you. Okay. It's not verboten. That's where it's at. <laughs> Oh, okay. You made your you made your way around, Ma. It was no, the sixties, free love. Oh no, it wasn't. And there wasn't any, so fooey on that. Oh, you and, charged? No, I didn't Shh, stop. <laughs> no. Bad, bad. Uh, okay. Boy. Are you done talking yet? Yes, I'm done. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us for another Rousing episode of Ma Hinshaw Loses Her Cookies. We will be back next week. To talk about the bike riders. I'm sure one of Ma Hinshaw's ex-boyfriends is probably in the film. So tune in and we'll discuss, you know, her riding on the back of motorcycles in the 60s during Free Love. She dated a Hell's Angel back then uh, called uh, uh, Axel. So anyways. <laughs> I wish you guys saw her face on video. This is hilarious. But anyways, thanks again, everyone. We will chat with you next week. Bye.